Wait, wait, wait. You tell me what's going on. Y'all just pulled out guns on me. Okay, exactly. I don't know what you're trying to do right now, but you guys are, you're over here with the door open, all right? Yeah, we need to check it. Listen, look at that. Is it illegal to have the door open? Cool, man. So calm down. It, Let's start over. You call, you put your gun away. Let's no, no, calm, calm down. Put your guns away. Calm, don't worry about my gun. Put your gun away. Our hands are up. Cops are supposed to be trained and know the law, but what happens when that's not true? Here are 10 of the dumbest cops you'll ever see. But first, a quick message from today's sponsor. As someone who watches a lot of movies and videos, I sign up for a lot of subscriptions. However, some of them I forget to cancel, and it costs me quite a lot. So finally, I signed up for the sponsor of today's video, Rocket Money. Rocket Money is an all-in-one finance app that lets you save more and spend less, and I use it to cancel those unwanted subscriptions that I forget about. I've also been using it to track how much money I spend. It really helps not to overspend because who knows what can happen. It can also help you manage your credit score, which is pretty important. So if you wanna save more and spend less and join over 5 million people currently using Rocket Money and use my link in the description to join or go to rocketmoney.com slash Detective Williams to get started for free. You can also unlock even more features with premium. Thanks Rocket Money for sponsoring the video. Now, let's continue. Starting with this suspect in pursuit who tried to evade LAPD officers by laying next to a vehicle. What follows is absolutely incredible. And then you can see it right there, the suspect trying to get into somebody's property or still trying to hide, but uh, doing a very, very poor job of it right there. LAPD coming to a stop. Oh, come on, guys. He's right there. Uh, the, the officer's running right by him. They're, they're going right by him. As the officers arrive on the scene, they run right past the suspect who was doing a poor job trying to hide. And if you thought he'll be easily caught because they saw him there, well, you'd be very wrong. Angie, our pilot today, talking on O2, trying to tell the officers that this suspect is right there. And, uh, and again, you just saw that. Oh my goodness, I just feel so bad for those officers making their way back now. It's the blue car. There we go. Somebody's, get, somebody's getting the information. Somebody's got to be getting the information. Keep coming around, Ange. Keep coming around. Keep coming around. That suspect, unbelievable. We're watching this live. And you have to understand that these officers, they don't know what the information that we know. But again, that LAPD helicopter just arriving. There you go. Some of those officers must be getting that information. There you go. There you go. And now that suspect going into custody. Wow. Wow. And they haven't seen him yet. This is unbelievable. There we go. Oh my gosh. To everyone's shock, somehow, the officer who leaned down didn't see the suspect and kept on looking for him. Observing this, we can safely say that this guy has mastered the ability to stay so still that he becomes invisible to the eye. It was clearly a poor game of hide-and-seek and disappointing seeking by the officers. But if you thought that was shocking, wait till you see this officer's stupid reaction to an alleged car accident. So you're saying you thought there was an auto accident and so you came up with a gun? So you thought there was an auto accident so you came up with a gun? This case involves an Arizona officer who pulled over to a parked car after alleged report of an auto accident only to immediately pull his gun on the two men present in the car. Luckily for us, one of the men knew better and started recording the interaction. The ruckus, sir. Oh, there it goes. Transmission's as as, better? As soon as, as soon as he comes out. It's all better now? What? Shut it! Come on up here. Hey, the car is hot, man. I'm just trying to get some water out of it. Whoa, whoa, what the? What hey, man? what are you doing, man? Don't pull your gun. There's out. no you gun. Ken, what are you doing? Put your hands on the Me? Put your hands on the wheel. Put your hands yeah. on the dash. What are you doing with your gun out, man? All right, there's I'm no not threat. There's no threat. Got it. I'll tell you in a second. Holster your weapon, man. All right. You don't You're tell me what to do. All right, Post. keep your hands on the dash, keep your hands on the thing. All right. on the 911 call, all right? Okay. I'll explain all that to you in a second, all right? Because we're trying to get water, right? Okay, exactly. I don't know what you're trying to do right now, but you guys are, you're over here with the door open. All right? Yeah, we need to check it. Listen, look at that. Is it illegal to have the door open? Cool, man. So calm down. Is it, let's start over. You call, you put your gun away. No, let's no, no, calm, calm down. Put your guns away. Call, don't worry about my gun. Put your gun away. Our hands are up. You don't tell me what to do. Put your gun away. Turn it the 
ammunition off. A lot can be said about the officer's decision to pull a gun on the men. If this was indeed a car accident, would the officer have shot the survivors? This officer may as well have committed a felony by pulling his weapon and pointing it at these citizens with no reasonable threat present, not to mention him asking for a do-over despite still holding his firearm and requiring their hands be up under threat of death. It's hot. We have to leave it going. The transmission is hot. Okay. I'm not moving my hands. Fair enough. What are you doing out here? Whatever I want. Am I breaking the law? I'm not breaking any laws. I need some water. But panties hot. Okay. You guys involved in that collision out here? No. No. It came out as a does red it, car. Does it look two like white males? No. So does it look like a collision? Prison. Take a look at the collision. I haven't walked out of there, bro. Okay. Well, well, then do an investigation. Right. We'll keep our hands up here. You check the I'm car. I'm here trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Okay. All right. All right. I, this, that's I one thing. You, I'm out fighting away. I'm telling you exactly what to do, and you're not doing it. That's why this came out. I don't listen to All tyrants, right? man. You got your gun pulled. Look at it's you. This don't make me a tyrant, bro. Yes, it does. Yeah, it does. It does. We didn't pull yes, a gun on you. Okay. Listen, let's start over, man. What do you? What's your business out here right now? <laughs> Anything I want to do. A free American citizen exercising any right so I can. So you weren't involved in an auto accident, right? Yeah. Why don't you take a look around and do your own investigation? Okay. How about this? Pursue it to the fifth. I don't need to talk to you anymore. How about that? Fair enough, man. All right, there it you go. You do need to give me your license. You swore an oath to the Constitution, right? Your driver's license. For what? And this is not a traffic stop. For what? Huh? For what? Because I'm, I'm on what's called an investigative stop. Then you right? tell me your reasonable, articulable suspicion, and I'll give you whatever you want. Okay. Tell me what it is. So you guys are red, red car, two white males, surveying the prison. All right, I'm out here on 911 call. I'm doing an investigative what? stop right now, okay? So I haven't had the chance to talk to you. Was there a yet. crime? Is cameras a there crime? There's possibly a crime, all right? So all I need your ID. You got to figure out if there's a crime first. Do you have Wilson. articulable suspicion? 458. Can you articulate your suspicion that we've committed? There's no crime, man. Hands are Come up on. here. I'm we ain't, we ain't, we ain't moving. Until my other unit gets here, then I can go back to the investigation. You can do whatever okay. you want, right. man. You're above the law. We'll, we'll keep our hands up here. We don't want to get shot or nothing. That's not cool, man. Yeah, what? that's, that's not gun. cool. Coming up cool. with a gun. Our Olsen, what's your bad you thought there was an, So you're saying you thought there was an auto accident, and so you came up with a gun? Auto accident. So, so you thought there was an auto accident. So you came up with a gun. Get your hand off my car, man. Get all the way off. From the cop's statement, it seems as though he's on edge. What this officer needs is some more training and a ride along for a year or so, just so he has the experience not to get into this type of situation. It is clear that after some exchange of arguments, the cop realized he was in the wrong and just tried to brush it off, only to finally change his entire demeanor. Go for it. I'm out with a red vehicle. Got two miles. Take pictures of the person out here. Right now, it's all I got so far. Doing lawful activity. Oh, so that's all you got is that we, is you're saying now it's not an auto accident, but somebody took pictures of a prison? I already told you what it is, man. I'm not gonna repeat myself. Okay, no, you told him what all it fairness, is. In all fairness, I'll repeat myself. Okay. So is it illegal to take pictures? Here's what it is, all right? I had a crime, I have a report of a crime committed. Because of your, because of your non-compliance, I have not had a opportunity to investigate it, okay? I'm gonna stand here with you. Mm -hmm. Once the other unit gets here, I'm having, having them stay with you guys. I'll continue on my investigation, okay. all right? Can, can not you... expect to run into a red car with two white males <laughs> surveying the prison as I'm on the way to the exact call that I'm out here for, okay? Okay, can you I, tell I can't me that? Be any more clear than that? All right, all right. So we'll just hang out. So is the crime over? I, I respect you all right, guys. All right. Rights. Well, all thank you, thank you. Let's all keep right. it that way. Let's cool. get the right. Cool. I'm pointing my gun at you, but all I right. got my gun out. And I'm okay. By law, more than entitled to that. All right. Can I clarify one thing then? Is the is the 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 suspicion of crime is it an auto accident or public photography? Which one? That would be hit and run, actually. Okay, so an auto accident. Well, not just an auto. It'd be a hit and run. Okay. Okay. Cool. Offense, yeah. Cool. So it has nothing to do with public photography, then. No. Okay. Because you said surveying no. a prison. I'm can't. You keep that thing out, man. I'm, yeah. I'm can't. I got a camera. You got I'm a just trying to clarify. Because I'm just okay. trying to clarify. Because it sounds like two separate things: surveying a prison and an auto accident. I'm trying to put together what you're trying to. You well, know. There was that lead up, and then there was an auto accident, and then there was a hit and run. Okay. So the car <laughs> itself is hit and run. Okay, but. Okay. Not just surveying the prison. Okay. Now that we've de-escalated, right. can I put you my hands down? Survey. Can I put my hands down now that we've de-escalated? Sure. All right, thanks. Right. Like For this officer, an accident is not a crime, but a pretext to be a tyrant. Once he realized that there was no threat from the scenario that he had in his head, you could hear the adrenaline dump in his voice. We can only hope he got the punishment he deserves, or a lesson in training to be a better cop. But stupid cops showing why a lot of people hate them doesn't end here. It gets even worse. On August 2nd, 
2020, Myrtle Beach Police Department officers Zach Rafi and Kyle Dick detained Samantha Panda and Kendall Lee after calls of complaint against the women for wearing inappropriate clothes at the beach. Samantha's boyfriend began filming the interaction after Samantha was handcuffed, allowing us to see this incredible case. Why is it illegal to, to wear, to have a bikini on the beach? I literally wear this to the beach every day. I want us to show you, we're gonna show okay, you. Ab absolutely. Did, did someone complain? Yeah. yeah. Is, I mean, we don't just show up and tell everybody yeah, everywhere. Yeah, we just don't show up and throw people in handcuffs. I, I understand. I turn right to it. Nudity display specific nominal parts. This is not what we are going Shall be unlawful for any person to appear in the nude on any public beach, beach, beach access to the public waters or any public property in the view of the public. I'm not so nude. So nobody's nude. There's nobody I'm nude right nude. now. I'm not nude. After they read a section of the laws that states nudity as unlawful at the beach, the boyfriend explains to the officers that Samantha hasn't broken any law. Officer Dick can be heard saying she's detained for her behavior, which is an unreasonable explanation. As long as it's not in a sexually explicit manner, and there's no sexually, there's nothing sexually explicit about this. I you. I just read it. Okay, hey, nude, in the nude. This is not considered nudity. There is clothing covering their private parts. Just because just because she, she has a bikini that, that is more more revealing does not mean that she's in the wrong. Nothing in there says um any quote unquote private parts are not uncovered. Or yeah, none of our private parts are uncovered. You literally detained me yes. for being in a call. Yes, because of the way you're acting. The sergeant then arrives on scene, and instead of policing the officers, he decides to police Samantha, going as far as to say that the officer was holding on to her for support so she didn't fall over. What's going on? Can he get off of me, please? Well, he's, he's holding to so nobody else. I'm not going to fall. I'm, it's just, 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 which doesn't say anything about being in a thong. It just says you can't be nude. Jimmy Jam? Jimmy Jam, yeah. So, I am not nude. I have everything that is a quote-unquote private part is covered. You can't tell me I can't wear a thong. Do you with the exposure of anatomical parts, like what you have in the nose, not in the that you can't have. But you're, you can't tell us that. Anatomical parts could be my belly button. Listen, you can't listen, just make listen, things up at I'm your not, discretion. Listen, I'm not making up. I'm telling you what, what the city is. So let me go let me go pull up the city order for it. Give me just a minute. Let's get everything figured out and I will show it to you. You cannot be out here with mom, you have to have one cover. That's actually I'm gonna go off the team. Off the team. Hey, she she I asked you to show you. you. She asked you to show you. And then you guys said no, right off the bat. So she, she did say walk away after that. Samantha claimed that she had started to walk away from the officers. This may have given the officers a chance to bring out the handcuffs. What's absurd is Officer Dick threatening to arrest the boyfriend for obstruction just because he chose to stand up to them in support of his girlfriend. You want to come around and throw your weight around like, like I have to do everything you say. That's not the case. So if you don't want to show me something, because it's saying nudity. There's no nudity. You keep chiming in, you're going to jail. For what? For talking? Hindering. Hindering. Hindering what? Walk away. We're we have our going. social distance. We have our social distance. I'm dealing with them. I'm, I'm investigating them right now. Thank you. Okay, and I'm with them. You're still talking. Um, what the? So, like, I'm going to tell them Hey, so many times. Just invoke the fifth right now. No, that's it. Just... Just, uh, there, there's no need to, to talk and, and to speak with them. Okay. They're being irrational, unreasonable, and that, that's just how it is. Two, if you're out here in a bathing suit and, and a cover. 
grow up, you have a thong 100, that's fine. So what's what's considered a thong? Because that's a Brazilian cut bikini. We're, we're not getting I, I, because, Well, it does matter because if no. I'm going to go buy a bikini, I would like to know bro, if I can bro, wear it. Bro, but our one is just says butt on. So okay, so so then so then that's a buttocks uh, over there. So no? okay. The sergeant then proceeds to show Samantha the ordinances she had allegedly violated. After having wasted everyone's time, the officers finally allow Samantha and her friends to leave. It's insane to watch how little info about the law police officers actually have. But dumb officers, without enough training, can lead to dangerous situations such as this one, where an incompetent cop injured an innocent woman while on duty. On October 20th, 2019, Greenville County Sheriff's Office deputy was called to a gas station after reports of a man shoplifting. The deputy realizes it's the same man with whom she had earlier sorted out a non-violent domestic dispute the same day. The man allegedly had a fight with his mother after trying to steal her purse for the beer money he was declined. Since the deputy knew where he lived, she decided it was a good option to meet him at his house without backup or informing other officers. Were you at the Sphinx this morning? Yeah? Okay. So what's going to happen next? I'm going to read you Miranda, your Miranda rights. All right? Because I have suspicion that you stole from them this morning. Okay? Then I'm going to ask you some questions. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Hey, where are you going? The man is clearly drunk and not wanting to listen to the deputy, starts to walk back inside. And here is when things start to escalate after the deputy pulls him. Hey, 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 hey. No, you're not. Hey, hey, listen. Please don't, please don't do that. You don't run away from me. Abused, and this I is nothing you. sexual. Do not leave me again. Do you understand? Don't grab me. Do not run away do from me. Do not grab me. You may arrest you right here and right now? I don't give a f what you do. Okay. Do not grab me. Do not walk away from me or I will put hands I on you. I respect you and I will talk to you. Okay, don't walk away from me. Don't f grab me. That I can't guarantee. Don't f Pushing a drunk, angry man is the worst choice the deputy could have made. The mother then jumps to the officer's support as she schools her son. Don't you talk to her like that. I will talk to her No, you will I want. not. Calm down. Just I'm here to read you. Do not grab me She's like that. She's trying to help you. You're I'm digging not, a hole. I'm You're not digging yourself you. right into a hole. I promise you. Okay, but I will don't not walk touch away you. from me. But don't fing touch ah, me. No. Don't I have to Don't fing tell hey, me. Hey, 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 hey. I have a right to put hands on no, you. you don't. If you walk, you do not have away a right. From me. You do never have. A All right, right, listen. Right. Let's go back to what we're doing. I'm reading you Miranda. Are you ready? No, I don't give. Then, while being read his Miranda rights, the man again tries to walk away, but the deputy catches hold of him. Eventually, he admits to shoplifting after being urged on by his mother. Hey, you're staying down here. Come on. Come on. Please don't do this. Green Bluff 23, I need 1041, bro. Stop, 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 stop it. Just don't worry, bro. You cannot, you cannot touch me. John, John, don't you dare. You cannot touch me. Just don't touch me. It's all I'm asking you. Stay right down here. I'm asking you. Just don't touch me. Watch out. Don't touch me. Come back down here right now. Don't touch me. Come on, let's go. No. Listen, my partner's coming. You're gonna be under arrest. Get back down here right now. That's fine. I can be under arrest. Come down. Let's go. Let's go. Please don't touch me like that. You cannot walk away from a police officer. Let's go. Get down here. Sean, don't get yourself in a ridiculous mess. Please tell me you didn't take care of Don't touch me. Sean, please tell me you did not take care of me. Don't touch me. Sean, please tell me you did not take care of me. Sean, please tell me you did not take care of me. Yes, of course it did. The deputy eventually manages to get the man downstairs as he breaks down, stating that he doesn't want to hurt her, and as we will soon see, she should have listened better. Turn around. Turn around. I don't want to hurt you. Great, turn around. Okay, 
You're gonna get a resisting charge. Why would you do that? Because it's the law, Sean. Just because? Welcome to the law. Just because cause you feel like it. Does it make you feel good? Does it make you feel good? breaking the law is what you're doing okay and as soon as the rest of them come in you're going in handcuffs and you're going to jail who cares <clears throat> i'll wait as long as you're willing to wait they're coming now when you okay. sober up you're not going to feel the same way sean you're going to know you made a big mistake that's okay they can come and they can arrest me and it won't matter Great. I will happily take you down to jail. That's where you can stay. Despite receiving passive resistance from the man, the deputy goes in for the arrest instead of waiting around for backup. Come on. Let's get it. Delta 23, Delta 5, you 10 4. Affirmative 10 4. I'm placing you under listen, arrest. Listen to me. No. Are you, are you, are you going to be mean? Or you can do this nice? I'm asking you to do this. I'm asking you to put your hands behind your back. I'm asking you to do this nice. Get out of the way. Get I'm out of the way. I'm asking you to do this nice. Hey, hey, hey. Wait, wait, wait. I'm asking you to do this nice. The deputy then pulls out her pistol in fear of what the man may do as he had grabbed her wrist. The mother decides to step in to protect her son, pleading with the officer to wait for backup. Put your hands down! You want to shoot me, you fucking shoot me. Put your hands down. Wait, wait, do not tell me what to do. I know. Can you wait till the no! Back up! Back up! Back up! You're making a Back up! Within a matter of seconds, the situation escalates and shots are fired, one of them accidentally hitting the mother. To make matters worse, the backup officer arrives and notices the deputy on the floor and proceeds to kick the suspect in the face. Sean, Sean! You don't no! You don't hurt my mother. Back up. You don't hurt my mother. You don't hurt my mother. After the suspect was allegedly knocked out by the kick, the officers proceed to handcuff him. The suspect identified as Sean Kaiser was finally charged with resisting arrest with assault, assault and battery of a high and aggravated nature and shoplifting. The mother remained hospitalized a month and a half after the incident. According to the suspect's attorney, the deputy was found to have violated the agency's arrest policy according to the sheriff's office, but she wasn't fired and disappointing actions taken by dumb cops continue and much worse. On July 26, 2021, Officer David Lance Dukes of Orangeburg Department of Public Safety pulled over to a townhouse where a suspect had been allegedly banging on the doors. The suspect was also reported to carry a firearm tucked by his waistband. Upon arriving at the scene, Officer David proceeds to order the two men standing in the parking lot to get down on the ground. What unfolds next is absolutely horrifying. Let me see your hands. Bert, get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground right here! Who is Get on the ground! You! Bert, you shark! Get on the ground! Over here! On the ground! On the ground! Get on the ground! Do you, do you not listen? Get on the ground! The men were later identified to be 58-year-old Clarence Galliard and his cousin, Mario Julian. What you didn't know is that Clarence was disabled, and Officer David's use of excessive force to push him to the ground caused Clarence to bang his head against the hard ground. Then, the officer searches for the weapon Clarence had been carrying. Is there a gun back there? No. By that truck. No gun. You're not listening, dude. You got a gun on you, man? No, I ain't got no gun. All right, I don't I'm want no gun. No. Oh, Turn back over. Paul, do you watch him say?
He had something. The door's unlocked in the car. No, he was right here. Watch him. Go watch him. There it is. That's what he had. To make matters worse for the officer, the alleged gun wasn't a gun at all. The officer's attitude towards the suspect only seems to get more deficient. Get him up. Get the leg up. 25 cents, got one tank. Put your leg that way so you can stand up. All right, listen, I'm about to help you. Hold on, hold on. All right, ready? One, two, three. All right. Yeah, listen. yeah, they slammed my head listen. down on the cement. Yeah. Go back inside. Go back in the house. Go back in the yeah. house. Ain't nobody talking to you. I got head drummer. Go back in the house. Yeah. Y'all bust my head down. Yeah, I've been in the accident. Yeah, y'all bust my head down. You threw me down. I sure did. And you wasn't listening. Yeah. No, it ain't. You ain't just threw me down like that. I'm disability. Okay. I got the head problem. Yup. You throw me down. Yup. You throw me down. You throw me down. Yup. You bust my head down on the cement. Yup. You bust my head. Alright, let me tell you what. That's forehead. You bust my head down on the cement. He was, he was in front of the car when I came up. He was walking like this. And I, I thought it was a gun at first. I said, drop the gun, drop the gun, drop the gun, drop the gun. Had him at gunpoint. And he's over here doing something like this. What he was doing is putting this up behind the tire. So he comes over right here. He got his hands in his pockets. I'm telling him, let me see your hands, let me see your hands, let me see your hands. He, your hands. he wasn't listening. He got the, like this right here, and we went on to the ground. According to Officer David, Clarence had his hands in his pockets and refused to comply. But camera footage shows otherwise, as Clarence had his hands up once he stepped in front of the vehicle. The version of events explained by the officer seemed to be made up by him to justify the action he took against Clarence. Officer David then tries to explain the same to his supervisor. Mayor, I'm gonna take that into evidence. But what he had? What? Well, I mean, his, you know, that's that's the reasons I did what I did. You know what I'm saying? That's where I'm coming from. Because when he was behind the truck, I couldn't see what he was doing. And I didn't know where, where that went. If it was still in his pockets when he come around that car with his hands in his pockets. As EMS arrives on the scene for medical assistance, Mario asks the officer for his business card. However, the officer claims they don't have issued cards by their department. This is when his peer officers step up, stating they do indeed have their cards on them. Okay, what's your badge number? 1059. Let me see if I can get my phone. Hold on. We, we, we have cars. Okay. Brandon, he can get his stuff off the car. Dude, What you just witnessed is cops holding another cop accountable in real time. While it may be rare, the disappointment of their own peers goes a long way in stopping police brutality. As for Officer David, he was arrested on criminal charges and immediately terminated after the incident. And if you wonder about the victim, Clarence Galeyard went on to win a $650,000 settlement against Orangeburg Department of Public Safety. But if you thought cops acting stupidly ends here, that's because you don't know this despicable case. On July 4th, 2023, Ohio police officers attempted to stop 23-year-old Jadarius Rose for a missing mud flap on his semi-truck. The suspect, however, briefly stopped the vehicle before driving away, leading the officers in a chase.
According to Rose, he had repeatedly told the dispatcher he was confused about why he was being pulled over and why police had their guns drawn. Rose eventually stopped after one of his tires was blown out. He still refused to exit his vehicle despite being ordered multiple times to do so. After being urged by the officers to exit the truck, Rose was ordered to approach them with his hands above his head or to get on the ground and he does so in a shocking twist. A police canine is deployed despite Rose complying with the officer's orders. That's us all! Come to me! You go one bit! Do not, do not, do not let them, Estrada, don't Leslie. release the dog, do not release the dog with his hands up, do not release the dog with his hands up, do not release the dog with his hands up, do Body cam footage shows Officer Ryan Speakman from Circleville Police Department holding back the K-9. Despite a trooper yelling out not to release the K-9 with the suspect's hands up, Officer Speakman deploys the dog, and it can be seen in the video attacking Rose. After being mauled by the K-9, the suspect can be heard crying out in pain. The fact that the dog didn't even see him as a threat at first says a lot. Officer Speakman is incompetent, and this was a clear violation. Not only that, the officers can be seen laughing after the incident, paying no heed to the pain the suspect is in. How this happened while the whole police department is on the scene blows my mind. Rose was eventually taken to a hospital to be treated for dog bites. He was charged with failure to comply. It isn't clear why he refused to comply during the traffic stop. He was eventually released when the officers found no evidence of him doing something illegal. As for Officer Speakman, he had been placed on administrative leave and was terminated after further review of the incident. And all it takes is a citizen who's willing to stand up to incompetent officers in order to keep them accountable, which is exactly what this journalist did. Now let's head over to the police department side and make sure that they respect our freedom of press right. Hey, how are you doing today, sir? Good, can I help you? Yeah, can I just get your name and badge number first? Uh, can I help you? You're in an employee parking lot. Can I, can I just get your name and badge Sergeant number? Sergeant Self. Sergeant Self? Yep. And your badge number? 615. 615? Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. I don't I don't need any help. Yeah, you're in a you know, secure, you're in an employee parking lot. It's not a secure area. It's an employee parking lot and you're not an employee. This is... And you're making employees feel uncomfortable. On January 20th, 2022, an individual journalist wanted to highlight and check Pooler police behavior by exercising his First Amendment right to film in public accessible areas to promote transparency and accountability. From the get-go, the later identified Sergeant Self's behavior with the man is defensive as he states that he's making the employees, police officers in this case, uncomfortable with his filming. This, this parking lot is not a secured area. Okay. It's public property. It might be only for employee parking. I'm not parking in here. My car is not parked in here. I'm an independent journalist. I'm working on a story. Okay. Well, this is for employees. You're not an employee, and you're making it's employee. Our, it's employees parking. Listen sir. to me. You're making our employees feel uncomfortable when they come in and out from their vehicles. So that that's where the problem is. I understand what I I I don't understand what you're saying because how would I make somebody feel uncomfortable? I don't understand. Because you're not an employee. And you're an employee parking lot. And you're making the employees feel uncomfortable. No, this isn't this is an employee parking lot like you said i'm not parking i'm a journalist exercising my freedom of press right in a public area this is public like if i was behind those gates over there behind you that you that would be a restricted area 
Do you do you suspect me of committing a crime, sir? Do you have your ID on you? Do you suspect me of committing a crime? Do you have your ID? Do you suspect me of committing a crime? Do you have any your ID on you? Sir, I need to know if you're suspecting me of committing a crime first. I'm a police officer. I asked you for your ID. I need you to give me your ID. Sir, with all due respect, with all due respect, sir, can I can I speak to another supervisor? I understand that you're a sergeant, I, but I, I do the, not. I am the supervisor here. I understand, but then you should know as a supervisor, sir, that unless you have reasonable, articulable suspicion that I've committed a crime in the state of Georgia, you cannot lawfully demand my ID from me. Okay, what I told you was you're making employees feel uncomfortable. I've asked you for your ID. You're That's not a property. crime, sir. That's not a crime. I'm asking, you should know that in Georgia, it's you have to have reasonable articulable suspicion of a crime that's been committed, sir. I just told you I'm engaged in a constitutionally protected activity. Yeah, and you're being Freedom suspicious. of press. You're, you're not, you don't belong in this parking lot. You're, you're suspicious suspicious, suspicious is not a crime, sir. Suspicion is not a crime. You know that. Sergeant, come on. You know. Suspicion is not a crime. It's infuriating to watch the sergeant ask for the journalist's ID on the cause of suspicion. What's shocking is that the journalist here seems to know the law more than the sergeant. The very same laws he's sworn to protect. The chief of the Pooler Police Department notices the commotion and comes to the scene. His behavior with the journalist you may find even more shocking. I don't understand. Am I being detained? No, you're not being detained. You keep on walking. Okay, if I'm not being detained, I'm going to continue about my business, sir. I'm going to do it here. I'm an independent you're journalist. Who, who are you, sir? You're not, I'm the chief of police. You're the chief yes, of police. Can I can I get your name? You can look it up on the internet if you're that smart. But why would I have to look it up on the internet, sir? What's your name? What? Where's the professionalism? What's your name? Where's the professionalism? Where's the professionalism? My sergeant asked you for a my first license. Tell me if you tell me your name no, and no, identify no, no, no. yourself. We're not, we're not making we're not making tests for tasks. This is a private. This is an employee parking lot. You're not an employee. You have this no is, business. This is this is. I'm not parking here. You, 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 this is, an Do you, is this fenced off? Look, I want to make it very clear. Uh, it's not it a fenced clear. off area. Let me, let me make it very clear. This is an employee parking lot. There's no there's no okay. no trespassing signs or anything like that, okay. sir. I'm well, not breaking the law, sir. No, I'm, ex I'm 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 actually engaged in a constitutionally protected activity, okay. and I feel like you're trying to bully me along with your sergeant. And sir, who are you? Who are you, sir? He's one of my employees. Okay, one of your employees. Yes. I feel like all three of you are trying to bully me and trying to exert authority over me that you don't have. Demanding ID. Your sergeant doesn't understand that he cannot demand ID lawfully okay, unless, unless, unless he has reasonable, articulable suspicion. I've committed a why crime. Why are you in my parking lot? That's a failure. That's a failure on your part, sir. You're supposed to educate your employees, correct? Why are you in my parking lot? They should know. I'm working. I, like I told your sergeant, I'm not just not answering questions. I I cannot answer questions, but I'm answering. I'm an independent journalist. I'm gathering content for a story on the city. I was inside doing a FOIA request. No. Yes, I was. Who says I'm recording anybody? Plus, it's public information. You guys run tags all day. People yeah. people drive around all day in the city with tags on. It's not like any private information. Do I have a database where I can look up people? Come on, you gotta you gotta think logically here. I don't have a database where I can just type in somebody's you know license plate and, and figure out who they are. These men swore an oath to defend the Constitution and protect citizens' rights. But when you stand up for those constitutional rights for yourself, those same men become enraged and furious that you're invoking the rights they swore to uphold. After being ordered to leave, the journalist, not wanting to escalate matters, proceeds to walk to the sidewalk, but continues to film. Okay, Let's be I'm gonna ask you to leave. Are, is, are you ordering me to leave? I'm ordering under you to threat leave. of arrest, sir? Uh, if, if, I'm ordering you, this is the third time I've told you, to leave my parking lot. I'm gonna go on a public sidewalk, and I'm gonna continue to record, you I'm gonna continue to record your parking lot, and I'm gonna hit you up with civil litigation over this, just so you know because you're you're violating a constitutionally protected activity. And in this small town here, you might think that you're gonna get away with it, but you're not. I'm telling you right now, Chief, and I don't know your name, but- I don't know your name either. You are the public servant here, sir. You are the public servant here. You're making, you're, you're, all you're doing is you're allowing your city, you're, you're portraying your city in a negative light okay. for the world to see, remember that. Good. Remember I told you that, Chief. Yes, sir. So this is a public sidewalk, correct? Yeah. This is a public sidewalk, make sure. You guys are nothing but a bunch of bullies. You're not gonna get my ID. You're not gonna get my ID. And I'm gonna be civil lit I'm gonna start civil litigation against you. Not willing to let the officers get away with it, the journalist requests the chief for his name in order to file a complaint against him. Meanwhile, the officers continue to hound the citizen as though he was a suspect, or worse, a criminal. You're not getting away with this one. 
You might get away with them. You might get away with them normally on a regular basis, but not today. I want to submit a complaint. So I go inside to do that. Yeah, or get him a complaint form. We'll get your complaint. Public injury. Attorney. I need. I need your names. It, it is your policy to give me your name. I, who, who do I know I'm filing a complaint against? I'll let you figure it out. Oh, you I gotta figure it out? out? That's real professional. You know everything else. That's real professional. Go ahead. Nah, you can go ahead. You're you can go ahead. You. You're behind me. Okay. You wanna file a complaint? Uh, you, guys are, you guys are the ones that are being aggressive here. You're not walking you behind me. You walking by the flagpole and he'll go get you a... Uh, I will. Don't worry about it. I will. What's your name? I need to file a complaint against you. Chief Ashley Brown. Chief Ashley Brown. Yeah. Okay, great. And your name, sir? Be professional. Come on. Is it really that serious? You're not making yourself look good here. I'm just asking for your name. Your name, sir? I'll wait for you to get over here so you can hear me. Oh, okay. Thank you. Your name, sir? Heinzman. Heinzman? Yes. And do you have a badge number, Heinzman? 654. 654? Thanks. Look anywhere before. So you can file a complaint. Yeah, I know you don't care, but... That's just, the, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Then comes civil litigation, chief. Then comes civil lit litigation. All right. Because I was trespassing in your parking lot. That's a public parking lot. Hey, we're not gonna debate it. You wanna file a complaint, it's about to get you, don't you, you, you don't tell me what to do. You don't tell me what to do. Let's make that clear. You don't tell me what to do. So you're the public you servant here. You wanna file the complaint. I do wanna file a complaint. You can go get it. I'm not stopping you. You guys have a bad attitude, especially you, Sergeant. You came over here trying to threaten me with my ID. Right. You got a bad attitude, man. That's you got to learn. The, you got to learn Georgia state law. That's your matter of opinion. So, do you understand that under Georgia state law, you cannot demand ID from law-abiding citizens, sir? Do you understand that or not? Was that on the sergeant's exam, or was it? Maybe I'll put a suggestion in that that should be on the sergeant's exam when you can and cannot identify a law-abiding citizen. After giving the officers an earful about the laws they're supposed to know, the journalist then walks in to file the complaint, but it isn't long before he's kicked out. Fill it out. You don't need to... I can fill it out here. No. Yeah, this is a public lobby. You're gonna kick me out of a public lobby too, Chief? Oh, fill it out then. All right, you thank you. Excuse me. You need to borrow your pen too, or...? Excuse me. You can't record while you're in here. Why can't I record while I'm in here? I have a constitutional right to film the police in the course of their duty, sir. Is this department so uneducated and so inept at their job that you, it must be from the top down because your sergeant doesn't know when he can legally identify somebody and you're telling me I can't film in a police lobby? Mm -hmm. Yes, I sure can. I can film in a police lobby. It's my constitutional right. I'm, I'm, I have freedom of press in this country, sir. What country do you think you live in? Are you with the press? Yes, I am with the press. Let me see your ID. No, I'm not showing you my ID. I'm not showing you an ID, sir. Get out of the building. Get out the building. Thank you, sir. Have a good one. Yeah. No problem. How do I file the complaint if I can't get in the building? The irony is that the officers didn't want the journalist recording, but had cameras in the lobby. The journalist is then seen talking with the officers yet again. Will you guys allow me to do it here? I don't understand Not what's the big deal. Recording. Not if you record. But where's 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 the signs that says I can't record in here? Where is the, where's the signs. law? You you, sh you sure do. This is a this is a constitutionally protected activity. So this that's what this is. As soon as you pass through that door, you're now private property. To it's public police. property. There's sensitive information, or both these windows that can be called on video, so you can't record in there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sure thing. <laughs> I went in there with a spy camera or my sunglasses that record, it wouldn't be an issue. But these guys are just looking for a reason to lock me up. So we're not gonna push it, but you know, we'll put them in the court of public opinion. The sergeant then tells the journalist that the complaint can't be filed since he hadn't added an address. And you didn't finish filling the form out. It requires an address at the top. No, I don't have to put an address. And your complaint not gonna be accepted. You didn't fill the form out correctly. No, no, no. That's not how it works. Bring the chief. Bring the chief out here. That's a, is how it you, works. You're allowed to do an anonymous complaint. Okay. You, need, you did not make it anonymous. So it doesn't matter. There? It doesn't matter. Okay. Well, I'm gonna tell you that the complaint's not valid. It doesn't matter. Because I want to speak to the chief. No. I want to speak to the chief. The chief's not here. You got me. I'm the one accepting the complaint. You're accepting the complaint on yourself. Okay. Well, I'm gonna tell you that 
it's you didn't finish you didn't fill the form out correctly so you can submit a complaint anonymously let me explain to you how something simple here anonymous would mean you didn't put your name and phone number so you took the anonymous part it doesn't out. matter okay whatever Certain like parts of it can be okay. certain parts right. of it can be anonymous. I don't have to get I don't have to give you my name. All right. I don't have to give you my address. You don't. You're just being difficult. Okay. Sergeant, a little bit of de-escalation training okay. will take you a long way. You need right. to learn. I understand you learn from your chief, who's right. also a bully and a tyrant, but you need to learn. Don't talk to people that way. You understand? All right. Have a safe day, okay? Yeah. Tyrant. The chief's behavior goes to show that when you have bad leadership on top, it trickles down to your entire department. If not corrected, it could be dangerous as the officers under him may take it as a sign to commit crimes and get away with it, knowing their chief is on their side. But if you thought these cases of dumb cops couldn't get any worse, you're in for a surprise when you see the case that follows. 15-year-old Rylan Wilder was cleaning up at a Chicago music school when an armed bank robbery suspect fleeing from cops runs inside. As officers enter behind the suspect, they start firing shots without a clear aim, accidentally shooting Rylan in the arm. Although he survived, Rylan's dream of playing the guitar professionally seemed like an impossible dream to achieve. That's where the bullet went in, and then this right here is where the bullet came out. 18 operations later, he fortunately learned to play the guitar in a whole new way. However, Rylan and his family did not back away from filing a lawsuit against the police department claiming reckless and excessive behavior. The department allegedly settled for $1.9 million. Needless to say, the whole incident could have been avoided with proper training of the officers. And although this case was about shooting an innocent man in crossfire, this one is actually holding an innocent man at gunpoint. Glassboro police officers, on October 1st, 2018, pulled over two Rowan University students after they received a call about a possible armed assault or robbery at a strip mall just two blocks from Camp Campus. What you didn't know is that the police had suspected the wrong car, leaving the suspects to endure a traumatic ordeal they would never forget. The students were later identified to be 21-year-old Altaif Hassan and 18-year-old Giovanna Robertson. And as an interesting note, an officer can be heard asking Altaif to shut his mouth when asked why they were being arrested. What happened, bro? Back here. Where? Spread your legs. 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 Yo, I don't know, Get bro. back. Like, Get back right ahead, now. Bro. Back up. Back up. Yo, y'all not gonna tell me what's going on? Y'all just gonna sit here and detain me like that? I don't got no rights. Close your mouth. All right. I swear to God, y'all better have a valid reason for this. Or what? Or what? Come on, bro. You not? Ah, Gia. Y'all got all these cop cars on us. What the f happened? Tell you in a second, just listen to what he tells you. Have a seat in the car. Have a seat in the car. You got me on campus looking crazy, and I ain't even...
The way the officer says, or else what, in response to Altaif saying, y'all better have a valid reason for this, proves officers really think they can violate human rights and do whatever they want without consequences. After Altaif and Giovanna are detained, the officers canvass the car in search of any weapons. According to a spokesperson from the university, a witness said, Altaif's car, a black charger, matched the description of the car involved in a robbery. You want to do a Nothing else. Other, other than that, we're gonna have to get a search warrant for his car. I mean, uh, Rich said the guy. Rich is out with the witness. He came out of a store, uh, pointed the gun towards that car, and was like laughing. And the guy said he was just focused on the gun. He made sure it was a gun. So the guy had the gun pointed at him. Yeah. But then he got into that car. But then he got into that uh, car. The driver said. Yeah. He got into the driver. Described him as heavier set. Poofy hair, about five six. Described it just now. Pretty, pretty close description, yeah. He's got poofy hair. Yeah. And he's, uh, he's not saying, but he, yeah. So we can, we can Mirandize him, see if he'll give us consent. If not, we're gonna have to get a warrant on the car. You know. Uh, Yes. The officers then read Altaif his Miranda rights, asking permission to search the car. What's going on? What's going on? You tell me what's going on. Y'all just pulled out guns on me. Chill out. About to tell you what's going on. So, if I tell you that, your rights are being silent. You're the boss. Anything you say can be used against you in court of law. You have a right to an attorney if you can afford to hire an attorney. What's going on, man? To you before any question, if you wish. You understand your rights as a Right. Yes, what's going on? Alright, so apparently there was a witness that said he may or may not have done something up the road. With a gun? Yeah. Oh! Did y'all find the gun? Well, did y'all find the gun? Oh, I was gonna ask if you would give us consent to search your vehicle. Go search my vehicle, you. What the f? Search my vehicle! Yeah, Go ahead! I'm right here. Cause you got me in handcuffs! Well, y'all just had detained. guns out on me! Go check my vehicle! Well, what the f wrong with you? Go ahead! Go check my vehicle! Thief! Thief! You gotta talk! Thief! Thief, you gotta chill out, bro! We're in a cop car, chill the f out! So, before we search your car, we have to present you with a form. They didn't find nothing, so it's on them, but chill the f out! Alright, so would you sign a form and give us consent to search your vehicle? Hell f yeah! Okay. What the f? Well, listen, man, I don't know you, I never met you. So, I'm not the person that witnessed it. Officer, you'll be upset too if you got pulled over and got accused of having a gun and you didn't have a gun. I'm sure I would. He's upset. Listen, though. I'm not questioning the fact that he's upset, but you have to understand from our point of view as well. So somebody said that somebody had a gun, we're not just going to walk up in the car. I understand that. You know, but the way some of your officers are acting, going to give consent. So. Oh, it's not very huh? Yep. When questioned by another officer, according to Altaif, he and his friend Giovanna were returning to campus from picking up his eyeglasses at a nearby store when they were pulled over by Glassboro police. Let me sign that shit, man. I don't even want to speak, bro. Okay. You just had a gun out on me. Don't but I don't even want to speak, bro. Don't speak. You could have just took my life. What's wrong with you? Where, where that shit at? Don't speak. No, Y'all supposed to be pulling over a life. charger with a gun in it. Y'all just pulled over a charger without a gun in it. Okay. I don't understand. Hey, how, how you doing your job? Where did you come from? Where did I come from? Hey. I just came from getting my glasses. Where? Right down the street by Kmart. Can you stop yelling? What the f***? Somebody yelling at you? Is that Man, you look, like y'all just had guns out on me. Okay. How about that? Okay. That's more than yelling. It's That's more disrespectful than you spitting in my face right now. Back up. Get away from, get away from my car. Get away from my police cars. Get him out of here. Get him all the way out of here. I'm good. Just let me sign that, man. Just go ahead and search my car. Y'all not. I don't have nothing to hide, y'all, but I'm good. Okay, and I, I listen, well, let me get I that. understand that, but let me, I'm just trying I'm to... I'm mad right now. You can't talk to somebody who's mad. You think we stopped you for no reason? Yes! Y'all yeah, about to find out that y'all stopped me for no reason. Maybe. Y'all about to find maybe that somebody out. somebody gave us I that know information. I know Ain't nobody. We didn't pull you over for no How reason. How many f***ing charges is there around here? It's a lot. I don't know, but you came right Somebody out there with a gun right asking, now when they charge you. Where'd you come from? And it ain't me. Where did you come I just from? came from the eyeglass spot. And where? It's called Accent. Whatever the fuck, accent glasses, right by Kmart, right by LA Fitness, okay. right, right by Checkers, okay. all that. All right, so that's and before that, I was in class. Uh, all right, so did, when you came out to your car, did somebody? Hell no. Did you point something at somebody in your car? Go check. I'm, Go I'm, see. I'm not saying I'm not, you had man, a gun, bro. I have a right to remain silent. Give me my I paperwork. Know, you do. Give me my paperwork. We're getting it for Give you. Give me my paperwork, bro. I'm asking you, did you point Where something? Where my paperwork at, bro? Yeah, you're at the I don't care, bro. Where my paperwork at? It's coming. I don't care, bro. Did you point something? No, you sound dumb. Let me get my paperwork.
him so you can check and you'll find out yourself if I did that or not. I'm not telling you shit, bro. I'm asking. You. I don't cooperate, Maybe bro. Maybe somebody mistaken. I'm not cooperating. Maybe with you, bro. somebody mistaken. Obviously, somebody mistakenly just got a guns pulled out on me. Okay. And I'm a student here. Okay. I pay all that money for y'all to pull out guns on me. Nah, you don't pay the one. F man. man, my taxes don't go to your pockets. No. Come on, come on, bro. No. Come on, bro. Where the f are these papers at? Y'all got me in here on some bull wasting my day. Making me look crazy in front of all my peers. I don't even give a bro. Let me sign that paper, y'all gonna go check my car, we good. Despite knowing they had the wrong person, the officer continues to try to press Altaif to try to get him to admit to anything they could use. Altaif believes the incident is racial. The officer's next statements to his brother may be proof of that, as he irrationally asked the brother to get far away from the cop cars without any valid reason, but that of course depends on your interpretation. Y'all was happy as hell with them guns too. Another black life today. Man, I don't care about none of that. Let me sign that, bro. I have to read this. No, I don't want to hear it, bro. Let me sign that. Who are enforcement officers and members of the Glassboro Police Department to conduct a complete of my vehicle, more specifically described below as a black Dodge Charger bearing New Jersey registration T96JXE. I know you can be fast. All right, now let's hurry up. I got class. I miss one, my nigga. Let's get it. I'll stay with him while you guys search. Okay. I put my mic. Huh? Thomas. Why y'all? Why y'all be people don't like the police? It's cause it is. Y'all be pulling random niggas off for no reason. Back, back out of here, away from our police cars. All the Bro, way. Your officer just told me to move over a little bit. All right, I'm telling you. What's the problem? I'm not being. I'm trying to make sure you. my brother is okay. Right. He just told me to move over a little bit. He's talking move away from the cars. I need to make sure I'm my gonna, brother is okay. Let's get something clear. I am going to ask you one time Off to go over into the grass and stay in the grass. Don't much come much back much over much near my police cars. Uh, I'm not being an asshole. I'm asking you something. Okay. I don't need you here by our cars. Stay over in the grass. All the way in the grass. After the search yielded no weapons, the students were released with no charges. According to them, the police had six guns, including an assault rifle aimed at them. Everyone makes mistakes. The problem is that when the cops make mistakes, things can turn into tragedies. I believe that in the end, the officers should have at least offered a formal apology. But pulling the guns out on the wrong suspect is not the only dumb thing cops have done. As we will see in our next case, an Arkansas state trooper allegedly crashed his vehicle into the wrong car during a pursuit. The trooper had intentionally performed a pit maneuver, a technique used by cops to stop a fleeing suspect by having mistakenly performed it on an innocent bystander. According to the authorities, the trooper had been in pursuit of two cars going over 100 miles per hour. One of them was a white sedan, unfortunately similar to the bystander's vehicle. Fortunately, the passengers of the vehicle were uninjured but declined medical assistance. The Trooper Corporal Thomas Hubbard submitted his letter of resignation following an inspection into the incident by his supervisor. Many of these accidents may as well have been prevented had the dumb officers received proper training and knowledge of laws. What do you think? If you enjoyed this video, watch this one, and don't forget to subscribe. Goodbye!